Africa recycles just 4% of the waste it generates. This is according to the continent's first consolidated waste management outlook report. It was launched by the UN Environment Programme and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. Joining us now to discuss this is the report's principal scientist, Professor Linda Godfrey. Good evening, Prof. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, what do we know? what's responsible for such um, a low percentage of waste that uh, uh, Africa is able to recycle? Well, I think that the, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that there are a number of reasons why we're seeing such a low recycling rate on the continent and why more than 90% of all the waste that is being generated is being disposed of to dump sites, typically to uncontrolled dump sites. You know, it's issues around uh, consumer awareness and behavior, our attitudes to waste. It's issues around availability of services. We know, for example, that the waste collection coverage in Africa is only 55%. So a lot of the waste is not even being collected. It's issues in terms of political willingness and support at the highest levels to want to do something about waste management. So I think it's a, it's a complexity of issues that is driving this behavior on the continent. Now, which parts of the world are doing better than most? Well, I think if we look at the performance when it comes to waste management, and I think particularly this paradigm shift around waste as rather being a resource, we normally look to the European Union. I think very often they've been the thought leaders in terms of how waste should be managed and the new paradigm shift towards the circular economy. But what does the EU have that Africa, for instance, does not have? Maybe that's what uh, I could explain the uh, dilemma. Well, I think, uh, you know, a, a very environmentally conscious citizenship, a very strong political support base, uh, also a very strong legislative system in terms of dealing with waste management. Again, one of the things that we found in the Africa Waste Management Outlook is uh, for many countries, they don't have dedicated waste legislation. Where they do have, we may not necessarily have the levels of monitoring and enforcement that needs to go hand in hand with that. We see that where we have weaknesses in legislation, very often it gets exploited. And so, for example, we see that there is an influx of hazardous waste, very often electronic waste, that uh, flows into Africa, very often from developed countries. And it's coming in because of these gaps in enforcement and monitoring. And the technology, Prof, does that not uh, play a part at all? The availability of the kind of technology that you can use uh, to do uh, the sort of recycling uh, that is or may be needed? Well, yes, I th absolutely. I do think that technology does play an important role. But, you know, I think technology comes later, sort of the chicken and egg. I think the technology comes with the commitment and with the move to wanting to do something different about waste other than just landfilling. I must say, though, that, you know, when we painted the picture of waste management as it currently stands in Africa and some of the impacts that we're seeing, it doesn't paint necessarily the greatest picture for Africa. But we wanted to make sure that we left, uh, we, we left all citizens and decision makers with a very positive story as well. And so we have captured some of the incredible social and technological innovations that are happening on the African continent from very decentralized citizen-based activities around wanting to do things with waste plastic or tires or organic waste composting up to some very advanced technologies. We've just seen, for example, the commissioning of the first a thermal treatment plant, the Repi Waste to Energy plant in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And we're waiting to see how that operates in terms of uh, perhaps an example to other countries. We see, for example, in South Africa, the first bottle to bottle plant closing the loop on waste PET bottles. So where there is an opportunity, the private sector does come to the table. And I think that is also a very important issue that we need to look at moving forward. The issue of partnerships, whether that be between the public and the private sector, whether it be between the formal and the informal sector, whether it be non-governmental organizations, partnerships are really key to addressing the waste management challenges going forward.
Well, I was going to ask about uh, uh, the private sector because often uh, Africa gets told that it has to be investor friendly. And what that often means is that uh, the continent's countries cannot really insist on the same standards that a European Union or the Americas would insist, for example. Well, I think that, in, you know, the private sector and investment in the waste management sector is an issue. And unfortunately, what we're seeing is that the waste management sector in Africa is still considered very much high risk. And so the question is, how do we create an environment conducive for those who do want to invest in infrastructure, in services, in technology? We, uh, we calculate that if we could divert the waste away from dump sites into recycling, into reuse, into recovery, we could unlock 8 billion US dollars per annum of resources into the African economy. And I think, you know, a number like that is something that we need to sit up and, and take seriously and look at how we change our behavior with regards to waste management.